Uh, let me again thank all the voters of Norfolk for putting their trust in me. For those who went out and voted on yesterday, uh, I'm very appreciative, very grateful, and I'm honored uh, to be the mayor-elect of the city of Norfolk. Why I, haven't you talked? Why didn't you talk to the media last night? I was very ill. With, it, uh, sorry. Excuse sorry. me. I said wit. I'm sorry. I was very ill. This what, is an what, historic day for you. I mean, what does it mean for you and the city, the first African American mayor? I'm, uh, I'm very proud, uh, but more importantly, uh, I'm very uh, grateful to the citizens of Norfolk. It speaks uh, well of the citizens of Norfolk that they would put their trust in me. Uh, not only African American, but the most qualified mayor uh, uh, that we had in this in this race. Uh, the experiences uh, that I've had the unique qualifications serving the city uh, over the past 20 years in various uh, uh, various um, boards and commissions, even uh, uh, a member of the House of Delegates for 10 years, representing only the city of Norfolk. And these last four years in the Senate of Virginia and on the Senate Finance Committee, uh, the voters considered all of that and they put their trust uh, in me and I'm very grateful and very thankful, Eric. Your grandmother, Ms. Cooper, was and has had a profound impact on your life. Yes, indeed. When you were up there last night, what were you thinking about? When you were thinking about her and her sacrifice and your living with her for all those years and what she would be saying at this very important time in your life, sir? Well, Andy, thank you for, for mentioning my grandmother. As you know, I was reared uh, in my grandmother's home. Uh, when uh, I was born, my grandmother had nine children of her own and she was only 40 years old. And so I was a 10th child in my grandmother's home and she reared me as her, as her own. Uh, and she would have said that you showed up uh, and she would always uh, prepare me uh, for whatever activity, school, church, uh, recreational activities. But she insisted, uh, first I sign up and then show up for everything. Even when I uh, was not gonna be playing or even starting in a position, um, she wanted me to just to show up. So uh, she would have said last night, you showed up and I'm very proud. What are some of your first priorities gonna be taking office? Uh, the budget, of course. Uh, as a member in, uh, of the Senate Finance Committee and a person who has worked on budgets in my own business and of course uh, in the state, uh, I'm uh, gonna, I will be listening uh, very, uh, very intensely to uh, the budget presentation. Uh, the budget, the current budget is $1.26 billion. 812 of that is discretionary spending. And uh, 13 cents of every dollar that we spend now, Norfolk spends now, uh, goes to public safety. And 39 cents goes to public education. And I just wanted to, uh, to be certain that, uh, that, that, is, that is the right number, the right percentage of our, our general fund spending. Uh, and so I'll be listening to, to the budget and also meeting with uh, my colleagues on the city council, uh, meeting with uh, the city manager and the clerk and the city attorney and other uh, key um, uh, office holders in our city uh, to, 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 uh, to ensure that, uh, that you know, we have a, a good transition over the next couple of days and couple of uh, weeks. Mayor-elect Alexander, uh, you are talking about crime and poverty yes. and safety in the city. What do you want to say about that? Yeah, I think that uh, we have had uh, too many uh, homicides. Um, you know, one is too many. Uh, I think we need to inc have increased police presence. I want to start a, a pilot program to allow officers who live in the city of Norfolk uh, to take the uh, take the car home. I think that certainly will be a deterrent. Number two, I think we need to engage in a, a strong community engagement uh, to build that trust and that respect. Uh, not only for, uh, for, for our police department, but more importantly, uh, for citizens uh, to understand that our policemen are there to protect and serve. Uh, number three, I think we need to uh, be strong on code enforcement and also uh, with targeting uh, certain areas that, that's known for high crime uh, with sting operations and you know, maybe some traffic stops that aren't con unconstitutional uh, with, their, with suspicion that there is some criminal activity by, uh, by surveillance and to crack down on crime. I think that we need to be tough on crime uh, and, and have strict prosecution once you know we make the arrests. Are you pleased with the day-to-day -day management of this city? Do you see changes coming? I think that we always can uh, do better. Uh, I think that change is inevitable. Uh, I think that we are, uh, we are evolving. Uh, we have more uh, citizens uh, living in Norfolk. Uh, our, we have become a very diverse community. 54% uh, of our uh, housing stock is now occupied by renters. Uh, so we have to prepare for uh, 
uh, for uh, the, the millennials. Uh, we have 6,000 uh, uh, people living downtown Norfolk now. Uh, and so the, the, we're, we're always changing, and we need to prepare for the change and be, and be ready for more changes to come. Will you be evaluating positions from city manager down? That's city manager's position. Um, the council hires a city manager. The city manager has 5,000 employees with a monthly budget of $18 million. Uh, the manager runs the day-to-day -day operations uh, of the city. Uh, the, the mayor and the council will certainly provide guidance uh, and vote on land use and vote on the budget. But the, the manager is the day-to-day is, is the -day operator of our city. Are you pleased with the city manager now? He's a fine young man. I want to get your reaction to the election of um, Andrea McClellan. She beat out long time incumbent in Barclay win. What do you make of that? Well, Obviously, certainly, yeah, certainly. let me uh, congratulate uh, Andrea on her win, but more importantly, uh, to thank Barclay for his years of service. He's a fine gentleman. His, his family business started right here on uh, Grammy Street. It, the business is over 100 years old. He now operates uh, in Berkeley community. Um, he's, a, he's a great man, and I wish Barkley and his family the very best. Are you pleased with the police chief? Uh, chief Goldsmith, he's a very fine man. I have worked with him. Uh, again, I would like to uh, offer uh, a pilot program uh, with, uh, uh, to Chief Goldsmith and, and, and uh, Marcus Jones uh, about uh, having officers who live in the city uh, to be more engaged in community uh, as we, as we uh, uh, go return back to police-assisted community enforcement. Uh, and there, uh, there are some other programs uh, that I will uh, work with uh, Chief Goldsmith on. I've already had conversations with Secretary Brian Moran. He's the Secretary of uh, Public Safety for the Commonwealth of Virginia, and uh, he's willing to uh, provide some technical assistance. And also, we look for additional resources from the state as we deal with gun violence and as we deal with um, code enforcement. How with is, the, the, uh, go ahead. How is uh, being a state senator going to help you as now mayor? Uh, you, you already, you already have it seems like a little bit of influence, I guess, in Richmond with your counterparts there. Yeah. How is your position there yeah. going to help you? Yeah. Now? So in Richmond, I have a little bit of influence. As mayor, I have a, a lot of influence. But how, how is your position as a state senator going to help you in, in oh, your new position? Oh, you know, no question. So for ten years, I was on the uh, in the House of Delegates. I spent 10 years on the House Education Committee. Uh, so the, the public policy on standards of learning, standards of accreditation, and standards of quality uh, all affects Norfolk, uh, especially when it comes to um, uh, the uh, standards of learning. Um, I, I will be able to uh, assist our, uh, our school board uh, with guidance. Uh, they provide, the school board provide the governance, uh, but I will be able to help with guidance, also with programs and, and, and and other activities to improve our schools. In addition to that, uh, I will be able to uh, lobby uh, Richmond uh, for additional resources and funding, and more importantly, enabling legislation as it relates to um, some of our at-risk schools or our, our schools where there's high poverty, low academic achievement. If we need additional um, legislation to start school early before Labor Day, or even go year round for those uh, challenged schools, out of the 44 schools, in Norfolk, only 19 have met the minimum state accreditation, and so we, we have some we have some issues, some concerns. I look at those concerns as challenges, and uh, my experiences in Richmond uh, on the education committee, and also my experience on the finance committee, understanding funding, and understanding how to amend uh, the the state code to get Norfolk the additional uh, legislation that's needed um, to fix and help our kids who are. Who are, who are now having some difficulties learning in a, an academic setting. I want kids to come to Norfolk Public Schools able and ready to learn day one. What do you, what do you blame on the issues that are now facing this school system? The things you just outlined. Yeah, uh, who, who, who did what and what went wrong? Yeah, I think that we have a couple of things we can cite. Uh, one of the things that we can cite that we were using the uh, Norfolk Public Schools at one point was using the wrong curriculum. The curriculum that Norfolk Public Schools, uh, our, 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 our district was using, um, was not in sync with the state requirement. Number two, we've had multiple superintendents in the past decade. Uh, that is a problem as it relates to stability. And every superintendent that comes, that superintendent comes with his or her uh, staff, more importantly, with their uh, with their vision or their goals, more importantly, uh, programs that they want to purchase or put or implement, and sometimes it's very difficult uh, for a district to adapt to so many different changes. 
uh, within you know within a decade. So I think that there's some there, there have been some issues with, uh, with 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 the superintendent as well as with the curriculum uh, and, and and morale and also paying teachers. Uh, one of the things that we need to look at uh, as it relates to salaries and benefits are we competitive uh, with the other districts in the region? Real quick, I just want to circle back to what you said about increased rates and traffic stops. How are you going to the community is on board with that. This, well, again, community engagement. One of the things that I, uh, one of the initiatives I want to start is the mayor's community engagement roundtable uh, to go, to go out into the community w where we have uh, reports and, and, and statistics uh, on crime uh, that we engage the community, get the civic lead presidents and the in the faith based community in those communities, get them involved uh, with the initiative. If we're going to address crime, we're going to have to be tough on crime. Out of the uh, murders that were committed last year, we had 35 murders last year. As of January, 14 of those murders weren't solved, 14. And if you look at the stats, the data, um, majority of those murders were committed by strangers. It wasn't an acquaintance. It wasn't a, a boyfriend, girlfriend. It wasn't a family member. It was a complete stranger. And the others um, uh, were committed by a person who was a brief acquaintance. Uh, no long-term relationship and so having said that uh, we're having our children or these our young people getting involved with individuals who aren't from here uh, but they're getting involved through social media for whatever reason uh, be it a drug deal gone bad or be it uh, you know some merchandise that was exchanged and something wasn't right but a murder happens so we understand where a lot of these murders are taking place we need to have better surveillance and have traffic stops once we make the case uh, you have enough information to start deterring crime and then ho hopefully we can make the uh, make the arrest stick and have strict pr prosecution of those individuals who are committing crimes in the first place. The bigger part of it, Eric, is to have uh, prevention, early intervention, to keep our young people busy. There, there's high unemployment, there's high crime, and there are a lot of social ills in our, certain parts of our community, and we must address those issues in order to, uh, to fight crime. Those social ills fuel crime. What, I'm happy, brother. Well, uh, last question. What was the signal? What did your election mean? What signals did it send where we are today in 2016? Uh, yes, Norfolk. Uh, it speaks volumes of Norfolk uh, that uh, when we harness our determination uh, and when we come together around an elevating goal, a better Norfolk, uh, communities come together. People come together for that elevating goal, and that's an even better Norfolk. And that's what this moment means. That we looked at the best qualified person and that person happened to be African-American and that didn't deter uh, the majority of the voters from pulling the lever uh, for the best qualified person uh, with the experience, with the demeanor, with the determination, more importantly with the know-how, how to move Norfolk forward. And in a three-person race you got 52 percent of the vote? We did. And not to harp on it, but just last time, why didn't you just tell reporters that you were ill? I mean, because it just kind of gave the impression that maybe you were trying to dodge or, you know, get away. I mean, was there... Yeah, um, so um, last night, um, after being on, um, uh, being running uh, since January, if you know my schedule, I've been running nonstop since January. Uh, touchdown here um, from Richmond. Um, around the 11th had the kickoff on the 14th and I had uh, been going non-stop uh, since that time um, was feeling pretty tough but did not want to take away from the well-wishers people who had been part of the campaign who wanted to come and to uh, to to celebrate uh, more importantly to uh, press to flush shake hands and hug and did not want to take away from those individuals but if you look at your footage you could see that I was probably sweating profusely and that both eyes uh, were bloodshot red. And um, um, after some rest and after visiting uh, the physician today, um, I feel much better. And so if the perception was uh, that um, I did not um, want to engage in conversation, uh, that was only a perception. As you can see, I love conversation. I'm a conversationist. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Congratulations again. Thank you very much.